The East Brunswick High School Folio Club recently held the Night of the Arts at the East Brunswick Public Library in the teen space. Students and residents alike were invited to share some of their original artwork, including photography, paintings, and poetry. We actually have a Night of the Arts at the high school. Uh, that We started doing it two years ago. It was a fundraiser for the club, and basically what we wanted to do was we wanted something that was sort of a compilation of all the artwork because we, the, the folio is actually a magazine that, that we put together, the club, that's what we do in the club, is that the club meets every Wednesday. Uh, students from all throughout the school submit you know, photography, uh, paintings, poetry, short stories, and the club meets together and they talk about them and they decide which ones they want in the magazine. And then we make a magazine at the end of the year and we distribute it. Um, it's mostly students um, reading poetry, displaying their artwork. Uh, we try to get everyone involved. Um, we really try to support all the arts in the school um, and we do our best to get everyone uh, kind of there to show off what they do because everyone's pretty talented at our school. Um, so this is the first time we're doing it here at the library and it's pretty exciting. Um, well, because I thought it was central for the whole town so everyone in the town will eventually come here. And because I, I want it for the whole town event so it's not just a high school thing. So that's why I put it at the library so everyone will be able to see it and come. This was the first year that we decided to bring it here to the library and we weren't sure how it was going to go and I have to give Dylan credit because he's really sort of, he was the one that put this all together so I'm really proud of him because I think he did a really nice job um, and we have a nice turnout um, but it's great to have the community be part of it. That's what we really wanted is to try and get some people from East Brunswick besides students to kind of get involved so we can kind of re-inspire people's interest in the arts. The library is a great location for this because we've got lots of books of poetry and we're all about literature and art here. Um, and I think it's a great place to uh, get a little more recognition from the community. We're able to accept submissions from um, adults or kids um, and, and people that go to the high school or people that don't. So um, I think it's been really good and I think it's getting a lot more um, visibility here at the library than it might at the high school. Yeah, I mean, being here at the library is great. I mean, uh, the library, is, it's fantastic that they're, they have us here to be part of this. And I think that it also encourages more of that community involvement. We don't get as many community people uh, at our Night of the Arts because it's mostly students. We do get some parents that come, but that's more just in support. Um, I'd like to see this be an annual thing, so that way the more the word gets out, the more we get people from town coming. I would love to see people who are not affiliated with the high school coming and doing this. It would be great. I find this club to be probably like my little home. Um, everyone's just really supportive and fun, um, and it's just a great environment. I really like that everyone supports the arts there, and that's like really my little niche, so I love it. Uh, this is a poem that I wrote called Dreamer. I was a dreamer who dreamt such beautiful scenes of people and places too stunning to fathom. And when I lost you, I lost myself and all the dreams which encompassed my mind. I was a dreamer who saw perfection when perfection wasn't present, who saw lovely when lovely wasn't there. I was a dreamer who saw gold still glittering when lights fell dim and love still dancing as heartbreak ran in. I was a dreamer, but now this feels so quiet to me, like I've lost my voice or the will to speak, or the will to speak because I was a dreamer who dreamt such beautiful scenes until you went and let me down. So with all the planning that had been done and all the work that goes into planning the Night of the Arts, how do you feel that it's finally here? I was very nervous when I got here, and but now I'm, I'm more at ease because there's so many people and it's, uh, they all seem into it. Like There's not that straight person who just wants the food. So it's, I'm very happy that people are actually into it and reading. And so people who didn't actually plan on reading actually during one of our breaks actually found books and actually read poems. So that was really nice. I'm always amazed and surprised at how much talent there is at the school. And so many of these students, I see them in class, you know, so I don't get to see them with their art. So it's kind of a nice thing because, I mean, I teach English at the high school, so I see them from that perspective. But I don't ever really get a chance to see their photography and their artwork. So I'm always surprised when I walk around and I go, wow, this is amazing. And the kid goes, yeah, that's mine. I did that. You know, I'm just like, wow, you do this too? Like, that's really cool. So uh, I, I think... I'm oftentimes amazed at some of the work these kids are capable of. There's so, there's so much talent, the musical, artistic, everything. It's just, there's just so many kids that are talented in East Brunswick. And uh, what keeps you coming back? The art, <laughs> um, the great people, uh, the club advisor, Mr. Sisley, is very supportive of everyone. He loves 
giving us uh, every opportunity to get all of our ideas out there. Um, he's really supportive, so is everyone in the club. We've all kind of become like a little family. Um, and it's really nice to kind of see everyone's work and critique together and be supportive of each other. I think that there always is going to be this underlying desire for art and culture. And I think that the students find it. They find that outlet with the club that they don't find anywhere else. It's like this um, camaraderie that they share, that they all appreciate it. And you don't have to be Shakespeare to be in the club. You know, you don't have to be this fantastic poet. You just have to appreciate it and have something to say. And I think that having that outlet for them, that's why you get that core group of students that are really, that really love it and keep coming back every, every year. And for people who want to join Folio, how can they do so? Um, well, there's always a, what's it called? An activity fair at the high school every year. And we have, a, it's not like a booth, but we have posters there and a sign-up sheet. So all they'd have to do is come there and sign up. If not, they can email us beforehand at ebhsfolio at gmail.com to show their interest. And we can send them information about the next upcoming meetings and interest meetings so they can sign up there. Well, if you're watching this and you're a student, join Folio. Uh, if you're a parent of a student at East Brunswick, encourage them to join Folio and also encourage them to just get involved in the arts because we have a fantastic arts program and not just in Folio, we have fantastic, you know, art, music, uh, drama. I mean, East Brunswick is just such a fantastic program for students to get involved. There's so many great things. I'm just one little piece of the pie. Um, you know, just get, get, them, get an instrument in their hands, get a pen in their hands, get a, you know, a, a paintbrush, whatever it is, just get them doing it because we need art because that's, that's why we live. It's why we appreciate life is because of art. An okay looking lobby with fakish looking flowers. The walls are kind of shabby. The guy at the desk, he glowers. But outside there's a thunderstorm and the sky is falling down. You could go back to your dorm, only it's halfway across the town. <coughs> the elevator's up for repairs. There's little toddlers shrieking. You would have gone up the stairs if the stairs would just stop squeaking. So you're stuck here in this lobby with these fakish looking flowers. If only you could stop the rain with your imaginary powers. Um, I'm going to do um, an original poem. It's called When Pride Turns to Lip Gloss. And it's about bullying and such. <laughs> Smeared all over your face isn't very pretty. Plotting but your way to popularity. Because apparently that's all that matters. Looks pick on bad and batter, group thing, having a pack of people, money, privileges, wielding power against the already scared, prey on the confused, it sickens me. To anyone who dare step outside the bounds, be wary and prepare to be torn apart by hounds. Of course their fangs of choice are perfect, evenly spaced, yet you shouldn't voice something that cannot be erased. High heels and low self-esteem make a dangerous foe, but to point it out or cross them will only lead to woe. Perhaps less patriarchy would lessen the pettiness too, because society's influence says, females look good, all of you. 24 seven and no break will not lead to the best and brightest in the future, it's our generation's test. Which of you will survive constant pressure to be poised, pretty, pleasant, down to the nitty gritty, all comes packaged in a bow with femininity. This time I'm reading a poem that I actually wrote. It's called The Trouble With Time. The trouble with time is we're always running out of it. And who's to blame? The clocks. The, those thieves. They hide away the minutes, stash every second. They capture every moment, but we, not, we must not let them. Hold the clocks hostage. Don't let them out of your sight. The more you have, well, all the better. You'll never run out of time. One for the table, another for the chair. Oh, don't forget the dog bowl and the scratching post, too. Clocks on every wall, on every counter, every shelf. Look, look at the time. You can't miss it. It's everywhere. This office at 6, off to school at 5. It doesn't really matter. You'll never miss a beat. No time to waste. No, really. It's true. Not one second can be useless. Not one minute can go unused. Just imagine what you'd get done. And if the clocks get tired, if they start to whine and creak, well, just get a new one. What else are clock shops for? Stock up on the clocks if you're really so afraid. They'll help you track everything. There's one for every chore. They make clocks with a moment's hand now, just for those people who must always be reading, or working, or cooking, or praying, or studying, because every moment is counted. No, you mustn't sleep it away. Time is running out. Tick-tock, tick-tock. 
Perhaps you'd like some calendars to match your clock. 